Good afternoon, Winnipeg. My name is Ashley Reese, and you're listening to The Diamond Lane on Winnipeg's Classic 107 all week long. And last week, too, we've been talking about The Sopranos of Winnipeg. It is a concert that Manitoba Opera is putting on in conjunction with the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra on November 7th at 7.30 p.m. I've got two Sopranos with me, two of my personal heroes so excited today to talk to Tracy Dahl and Monica Huseman. Thank you so much for joining me today. You have been on stage with Manitoba Opera so many times between the two of you. What makes you particularly excited for this concert? <laughs> it, it, it's funny, you should start off with that we've both been on here for so long. Tracy, you know what I just figured out yesterday? What's that? That, that this marks, this concert marks my 20th anniversary with Manitoba Opera. I started in 2000 with Hansel and Gretel in the role of the Sandman and the Dew Fairy. And, and that was in the November time slot. So I literally just yesterday went, oh my goodness, this is my 20th year and my 10th performance opera with Manitoba Opera. So it's pretty exciting. Wow. Now, Tracy, your debut with Manitoba Opera was in Figaro, right? Correct. And Barbarina? Yes. I mean, not that my like knowledge of your careers is creepy at all. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so what makes it what makes this concert special for you, Tracy? Well, we've been starved for arts. And I think it's a wonderful it's it's wonderfully courageous, it's um bold. Um, I'm glad that the company has decided to, to find a way and the WSO as well, the symphony, to invite people back into the concert hall in a way that is safe um, and as well online so people don't have to leave home. They can see it from their homes. Um, I think doing this has made the best of a situation in which we find ourselves right now during the pandemic. So it will be wonderful. I think that all seven of us are going to be highly energized and highly nervous because all of us have had that, we haven't had that connection, right, of being in front of an audience or putting our nerves on that edge again. So I don't know. I don't, I'm already not sleeping. So <laughs> thanks, Tracy. I was, I was doing okay. I was doing okay. <laughs> Until you mentioned it. <laughs> Now, you mentioned the other Sopranos. They have mentioned you both, as I've talked to them uh, throughout the week. Out of the other Sopranos, how many of them have you taught or worked with in a like mentor uh, type of relationship? No, well, that's a good question. Um, well, I've, I mean, I, Andriana was my student uh, for her undergrad at U of M. And Lida worked with me the year prior to her starting her program in Calgary with the Young Artist Program there. And I occasionally had the chance to work with Andrea Lett, um, but she is Monica's student uh, from her undergrad. So that, um, I think uh, that's probably it from my, where my fingers have gone or? Yeah, well, um... Yeah, Andrea was, like Tracy said, my student in her undergrad and before. And then after that, Andrea went on to U of T to mine and Tracy's teacher, Mary Morrison. I really wanted Andrea to have a chance to study with Mary. Um, Mary has blessed so many of us um, across this country um, with her talents. Um, so that was really important to me. Um, I had the joy of occasionally, like Tracy, I'm having some lessons with Andreana in her undergrad. And when Tracy was out of town and Andreana was in town, um, I was her ears sometimes for some stuff. We always try and share our ears. We all have pretty similar ears. So uh, that's been nice. And um, uh, I, think that's, I think that's it as well. And what about each other? Have, do you share your ears with each other and, and play ideas off each other? Yeah, we, this, this began back, there's times in our lives when it's, it's not convenient to get to Toronto to work with Mary. Um, and uh, for the audience, your listening audience who might not know, Mary Morrison is a Winnipegger. Yeah. I yeah. didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, 
She yeah. is a, yeah, she's a Winnipegger. So Sorry, but she went to Kelvin. Yeah. Well, no you know, all, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, the, when we can't do that, we will often have a session where we get together and we sing for each other or say, I'm going to go off and doing this job and I'm just not sure about this and I want another pair of ears. So we listen to each other in those circumstances and we are our sober second thought for each other and a wise thought or a cautionary tale or a, or a cheerleader, all of those things, um, you know, because it's pretty hard to figure out what sound is like outside of your own body. You can't really listen. So you do need a, a pair of ears you trust. And I certainly do trust Monica's ears. So we have been in that situation before. Back that, at is <laughs> that is so lovely. Now, Often your busy performance schedules are taking you out of Winnipeg for at least a portion of the winter. This winter is probably going to be different, but what's something that you're excited about doing in Winnipeg this winter? Oh, oh I thought you were going to ask, you know, what did we do in the summertime? <laughs> well, hey, I can tell you what I did in the summertime to get me through the pandemic. Please tell me. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm an avid golfer, as is my husband. So it's the best socially distancing sport on the planet. The golf courses were open before a lot of things were open, which was terrific. So it's just a really nice way to spend, you know, four hours walking and unplugged. As we all know how the, the, the climate of, of learning and sharing has turned into um, endless screen hours. It's nice to be able to do something that doesn't involve a screen. Um, so golfing is a big one. And also, um, I love gardening, not, not growing vegetables, but like flower gardens and, 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 and the such. And like Tracy, when you spend uh, the bulk of the year teaching, um, your summer months, your spring and your summer months are the big months to go away and sing. So yes, everything was canceled, adjudicating was canceled, teaching at summer programs, performing, all of, the le all of that. And um, Many years in a row, I would look at my garden and go, oh, when I've got time, I'm going to rip that out and I'm going to move that and I'm going to put that there and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And well, I'm not going to lie, a couple really expensive trips to Lacoste, the reason they call it Lacoste <laughs> is because it costs. Um, I think I finally got my garden where I want it to be. So, and now, you know, there's snow on it. So we'll see if it survives winter, some things, and if the deer don't eat it. <laughs> Tracy, you're more a winter person anyways. <laughs> well, um, we, we'll be one of the many people who are probably found out, uh, found to, to be cross-country skiing. Um, we already own our skis, thank goodness, because I understand that the stores that do sell skis are selling out and having incredible business right now. Um, and it is a lovely thing to do outside, you know, and God willing, we get some really good snow. I know there are a lot of ski clubs that are out and will be doing dances to see snow, but even, even as much as this is here, uh, it probably won't stay and you need a good snow covering to have a good ski. So we'll be looking forward to getting out on cross country skis, walks. I wanna make sure that I don't stop while they have physical activity. I know a lot of people, I mean, come on, let's just think about the walks on the Wellington Crescent and whether you are at Bois d'Esprit, wherever you were, there's, the, there's these people, everybody was out getting some exercise and it, it shouldn't stop. Uh, we, know in, we know in Winnipeg what to do to be able to be outside. We just have to dress properly. And so we will head outdoors. Absolutely. And where are your favorite places to cross country ski? Um, well, we, we, uh, go to the, uh, it's, a, it's a Windsor Park in the city. It's really simple to get to. Um, and then going to La Barriere or um, Birds Hill. There, there are lots of places. You can go quite far away. You can go all the way down to Falcon Lake. There are, there are trails all over Manitoba. And there's a really good site for that. Had I known, I would have had that that, uh, you know, Manitoba cross-country ski something site that you could find all those different places to go to. 
Well, I'll make sure that I get that site from you and then I'll put it up at classic107.com. Monica, was that a bark from our next Global Pet Foods Classic Pet of the Month? Maybe? <laughs> I hope. No, it's my husband is just coming home and Lola is very excited that he's coming home. So give me one second. I'll just mute. <laughs> Now, Tracy, you also have a furry friend that has been keeping you company during COVID. How's mm -hmm. Oh, Dobby's doing okay. He's, uh, he had to have a little surgery this, this fall. And so he's been going, he's a, been going a little slow. He tore his ACL and he had to have that repaired, um, taken out like the plate and the, the screws and the plate taken out. And so he's like, he's a little slow, but he's never been super fond of, of activity. It definitely came up in one of my other interviews that Dobby is the least border collie, border collie ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, other people were talking about Dobby not being a dog, like a border collie. <laughs> um, Lita brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. He really is. He is. He is absolutely the most loving dog, and he is so easygoing. But he he really doesn't doesn't need the activity. He's okay without it. He's, uh, so in the pandemic, at the beginning of the pandemic, it was like, seriously, like those little pictures, those cartoons they show dogs that were going, not another walk, would you stop? <laughs> that was Dobby. It was like, please stop with all this exercise. Like I'm, I'm over it. So yeah, he'll, he'll be happy for a slightly less active winter. Absolutely. Now, Monica is, oh, sorry. What were you going to say, Monica? I have the opposite with my dog. Where yeah. No. Lola, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say Lola is a St. John's Ambulance therapy dog. Has she been missing working during the pandemic? She, well, she's been working for me and my husband. <laughs> but yes, she very much has been missing it. She loves to go to the airport, to the hospital, to Ronald McDonald room, to Ronald McDonald house, to flu clinics. I mean, she can't even do the flu clinics this year. And normally she sits and calms down the, the kids while they're getting poked on the one side. They just pet Lola on the other side. Um, it's been really hard. And she's 12, right? She's, she's not a spring chicken anymore. And um, you know, she's got a lot of life left in her for sure. She had the same surgery Dobby had, um, but she misses it. Yeah, she absolutely misses it. What we did do to socially distance through St. John's Ambulance is they got us to read uh, for the, uh, what's it called? The TAILS program. Um, um, uh, therapy animals involved in literary skills is what it stands for. And what I did was I would read books to Lola and videotape them as well. And Lola would listen to the stories and then uh, they would forward them to schools and programs and after school programs for, for students to, um, that have high anxiety. That, um, so she's still volunteering, albeit virtually, but it's just not, it's not the same. It really is not the same. Of course. And right now, I think we could all use a lot of dog pet therapy. Yes, absolutely. Well, I am so excited to uh, hear you both sing uh, virtually on uh, Saturday, November 7th with the Sopranos of Winnipeg concert put on by Manitoba Opera and the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Uh, it's been so lovely to talk to you and uh, good luck with the rest of, uh, rest of your preparations for the concert. And I know we're all just so excited to see opera return to this fantastic city. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Ashley.